Boom! We're back. We are back in studio for a big brown brizake down. What is happening, folks? It is basically noon on this lovely Friday afternoon in Los Angeles, California. It is still hot as balls out here. So hot. Yesterday, <clears throat> yesterday, I want to take my son. You know what? It was even my idea. I shouldn't say that. Friend, my friend Todd's. I came in, uh, got tickets at Universal. VIP passes. You don't have Saw to wait that. in line. Anything. I'm like sick. Hell yeah, I want to go. I didn't realize it was gonna be 115 degrees out. <laughs> so we get there. My little man's 18 months. He's big too for 18 months. 99 percentile. Hashtag blessed. Mm. Hashtag genetics. Anyways, he can't go on any of the rides. There wasn't one ride he could go on. There, there was like one kid one mm. that was like this. It was in the Minion Land. It was like this lame ride that just went in circles. And it was so hot, like I couldn't sit on it. It was so hot. So we went, we waited in line to get there. When I mean wait in line, we just, there's no line. There's no no one there. It was so hot. Went right in, sat down. I was like, oh my god, it's hot. He starts crying. I'm like and then it starts going. I'm like no, 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 stop this thing. I can get off. So we get off, and then I'm like trying to find a ride for him. Nothing. He can't go on anything. Mm-hmm. We have these great passes, but it was so goddamn hot. I've never sweat like that. I can't remember last time I sweat like that. I can't believe you went this time of year. Like I had no the idea, man. Day. Oh, that yesterday was the hottest day. One of them. Yeah. And I looked around. And I'm like, God, no one's here. It's gonna be sick. We're gonna go on all the rides. <laughs> and he liked. Uh, I not God bless these people the, that dress up like Shrek, mm-hmm. Fiona, yeah, SpongeBob, Burning probably the the Madagascar characters. I mean, <laughs> fuck. Those are the real MVPs. He loved them. That was worth the trip in itself. He, I mean, he's obsessed with those people. Did Love you guys that. go on that one main thing where everyone goes on that little? You're ride. talking about the 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 backlot tour. Yeah, that thing. It's too small for it. Even that can't be on it. Wow, because he has to be able to strap in himself, and I can't hold him. It's re- it's you know. Okay, that sucks. Don't don't take eighteen months <laughs> to you know Disney Disneyland's a different animal. Disneyland has all sorts of rides for kids. Mm. They have tons, or I think Legoland even more. They have like this little water park, but I don't know. It was. So goddamn hot out. <laughs> it looked cool though, but it was so hot out. Then they have like they're doing their thing. I don't see how they compete with Disneyland though. They're doing their thing, but so their thing is like Pixar. So Minions, Madagascar. Then they have Simpsons. Like they have Simpson. They have Springfield there. So they have like Moe's oh, Bar. Sweet. They have like Krusty the Clown Burgers. They have like <laughs> the Simpsons. I know, grown man. Uh, <laughs> they have the Simpsons Springfield there. And then, oh, and then their big thing is Harry Potter. Yeah, they have a Harry Potter land or something there, right? You know, I was thinking, what? why not do Game of Thrones? Because <laughs> they had like all like this uh, Harry Potter merchandise. And I, I, originally, I was like, oh, is this Game of Thrones merch? I'm about to go ham up in here and buy all this stuff. But uh, it was Harry Potter. Yeah. With the Wizard I don't really the fucks with Harry Potter. You don't? No, do you? When it first, the first movie that came out, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And that was the last time I saw it. <laughs> Bro, you're not young. What do you mean? I, know. I remember when it came out, though. You there was remember? No you like mean that. like what? Ten years ago? Yeah. So that and uh, Lord of the Rings came out sort of around the same time. They made those really magical movies. I thought it was awesome. They, uh, the lady who wrote that, were J.K. Rollins. Mm-hmm. They made fun of her. She was on like basically welfare in England. They were making fun of her because she was like, "I have this idea for a book," and like everyone was like, "Okay, good luck with that." Kiki mm-hmm. Kiki yep. biggest thing in the world. She's a billionaire, I think. Yeah, man. She has her own goddamn theme park, for Christ's sake. <laughs> so you know you're balling. Look at Walt Disney. But they have that. I don't know. It's cool. Again, I don't see how they compete with Disney. Because Disney, I mean, the merch, they have everything there. It's all Mickey Mouse. And Killing it's it. fun for everyone. Kids, everyone. adults, it's, everyone. Yeah. It's special. Yeah. Like, Universal's not special. Mm-mm. Universal. You know what Universal does have better is their Universal uh, Walk. Like the city, Universal oh. City, like the restaurants are better. I guess, but there's also Disney Downtown Disney. That's kind of like Downtown that. Disney's okay. They don't have. It's great, not as good. The though, food yeah. sucks. <laughs> the food okay. sucks. Had to break the diet yesterday. Had what chicken fingers with the kiddo. Chicken fingers. Yeah, Moe's chicken fingers. I ate at Moe's bar in Springfield. <laughs> Washed down with a beer. I felt oh, sick damn, to my stomach. Beer. Yeah. Nice. Felt super sick. <laughs> Terrible idea. You got to cheat at those things. Anyways, more of the story. 
Don't bring 18 month old to uh, mm-hmm. Disneyland and pay all the money for that stuff. Kind of a waste of time. Thank God I didn't have to pay for it. But, anyways. And then you see the post on Instagram of the slingshot thing I did. I got. Yes. You see that, that thing? It looks like the Batmobile. I feel like Bruce Wayne in it. What is so, it? So um, I see people online like, oh, dude, you're going to be on 30 for 30 broke. Like, you're so stupid with your money. Hashtag Showtime. Like, no, I'm not paying for that bullshit, man. Come on. They so this company. Let me make sure I get their name right. This company um, emailed me. It was like, hey, a while ago I took a picture with a slingshot. I was driving it. I was testing my buddies out because uh, he had one, and so I was going around in it. Here it is. Yeah, the, at the brand amp. So uh, at the brand amp. That's the company they sent to me because they sent me an email. They go, hey, we know you like cars and stuff. You know, I talk about cars and all that. And they're like. Uh, would you be down to if we sent you one of these to just play around with for a while? Hell yeah. I was like, yeah, but who would it, right? Yeah. Of course you would. Everyone would just listen to this. I was like, sure, I'll do that. So they send it. My friends was like the JV version. It, it was some, I mean, it was basically like a goat cart type of bullshit. I was like, ah, come on, I'm too grown for this. They sent me the Bruce Wayne version. This bitch is the, the fucking, I mean, turbo Porsche edition this thing is ridiculous i'm driven a stick in a little while oh it's stick too yeah it's stick nice. radio touchscreen it's sick however it's basically a motorcycle like you don't you can't like you have to have a helmet on you have to have a helmet on you you do have to have a helmet on it's a, it's nice. a it's called a polar slingshot but they're, they're, it's crazy looking you you looks like bruce wayne and they're they start at Right under twenty thousand, like nineteen grand. Jeez. Yeah, but the and the gas mileage, they're dope. I was thinking about it for you. Like they're dope, man, to get around. <laughs> yeah. You look thanks. sick in that thing. Can I take it? For sure you can take it. <laughs> All right. They might they're gonna be like, oh, it avoids the contract. For sure Chen needs to drive it. So you can All actually right. take it. You can have it. All right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. So I the you know, again, I've been doing a stick in a little while. Last time I did was uh, I test drove that Porsche G T three stick. That's it's a little different, it's a little smoother, although it is a race car. This thing, you don't know, it's just a little different. Anyways, uh, don't post any videos without a helmet on. Uh, you basically need a motorcycle license. I'm like, fuck that. What? I'm going to drive it to the gym today. So this morning I woke up, started that bad boy up, drove down PCH, and I was opening it up, and I was trying to kind of burn the clutch a little bit. People were going to roast me for that, and I was like, God, a little smoke. I'm, I just had to get better, you know? <laughs> so then I got better. And then I'm going 100 down PCH flying in that thing. And it's so much fun. But then a little seed crept in. I'm like, bro, if someone was turning on PCH, if someone didn't see me, it's not. Mo- it's, it's kind of big. It's not a motorcycle. The thing's fucking wide. If I, if, if I make a wrong turn, if I miss someone and I get hit, there's no airbags in this thing. It's game over. And then I was like, oh, my God. And then I was crawling about 40 miles an hour <laughs> down PCH. It's fun as hell. And what I would use it for, and I might buy it after I get done with this trial period, I would just use it to go to the gym and maybe the studio. Probably wouldn't bring it on the highway, though. A little too dangerous for the highway, huh? Uh, my, if I was younger, I'd be all over that thing. Oh, yeah, you have a family now and everything. Yeah, man. Yeah. My thing is, like, I can't die. Mm-hmm. I can't die because my son kind of needs his dad. Did you wear the helmet for the PCH? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did, sir. <laughs> all right. Yes, I did. <laughs> Because that and sounds I, like fun on PCH. I'm telling you, it's 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 a it's a blast. Yeah. It's so much fun. Like I said, after this trial period, uh, I'll probably pick one up. And the the one they sent me comes out. They sent they were sending me this info on it, and it's not this isn't even a a plug, nothing like that. I just want to give them a shout out just for hooking a brother up. Um, here it is. Yeah, so the it's the new 2018 one. Uh, they're shipping to dealers this month. They have a seven inch uh, touchscreen, ride command, uh, infotainment system, navigation, everything. So the 2018 slingshot models start right under 20k for the S model. Nice. Yeah, they're sick, man. Mine's like orange and black, matches my car. It's pretty cool. My neighbor's like, "What? What the fuck is going on here?" It's loud too. And then the morning I was pulling off again. I'm getting more used to the clutch and the stick, mm-hmm. and I revved the engine too high and just. <laughs> Like fishtailed all the way down like an asshole. They're they're fun though. Are, do you, are, did you grow up driving a clutch? Stick shift, yeah. Really? Remember I told you I, I raced those rice rockets. Me and my friends used That's to race correct. those things. Yeah. Fast and Furious style. Fast and Furious. Before Fast and Furious even came out. 
Yeah, we're all over it. Chin showed me a picture of his old school Civic. Uh-huh. I mean, that thing was slammed. Roll cage. Roll cage. No need for it. The fin <laughs> hanging off the back. A little fin. You loved it, huh? Yeah. You loved younger that days. One. Younger days, yeah. Chin, Chin's also sick. Very sick right now. Only for one day, Sick though. of slaying dick because of Chinder. <laughs> I did swipe. You're officially on it. I'm on, Chinder, I'm on Tinder and uh, Bumble. What's but the difference? I, was, I guess Bumble is if you like you swipe right. I'm starting to learn all this stuff as we go along, too. So you Educate swipe me, right. I have no idea. Swipe right if you like the person. Swipe left if you don't like them. And do they, do they know if you swipe left or right? So Tinder, if you swipe right and then they... The girl swipes right, then if you it's match, match. Then, then yeah, they know. Makes Otherwise, sense. but Bumble, they all know if you swipe right. Ooh. And it's up to the girl to contact you. Oh, it's more safe for the you. girl. Yeah, yeah. So the girl will see a bunch of people. That's assuming that all guys are creepy, though. Yeah. So but... there's a lot of creepy girls out there. Mm-hmm. A lot of super thirsty. Some of the pictures are so scary, man. Some of the pictures? Yeah, some of the pictures. I don't know why the pictures, if you kind of like just had like, you know, your, your face and maybe a little bit of your body. That's fine, but these is just a f- humongous face taking up the entire screen, and they have like a look to them. It was not cool at all, man. You know, you gotta be careful. Of, and I'm not body shaming. I'm just telling you like it is. Mm-hmm. You gotta be careful of the thick ones. Well, I mean, thick. I, know, I, I mean, the fat girls with the picture that yes. up like this. I never. There's a reason it's a bird eyes view. Yeah. Because down here, look, rhinoceros, <laughs> skinny, rhinoceros, yep. giraffe, exactly. rhinoceros, giraffe. Immediate left swipe. If Have you had that. any right swipes? Um, like that's the thing. I maybe five, and that's just not the way you're supposed to do. Like hundreds, I think. What? Why hundreds? So it's it's a numbers game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a numbers game. <laughs> I'm still learning. Go for it. It's like speed dating, yeah. kind of thing. So it's just like get rid of all the swamp donkeys or the grenades and then swamp donkeys. A swamp donkey. First of all, we got to introduce you real quick. We fr- and obviously, we're going to have to do this on Fire and the Kid because Brian's going to have some comments. And we're, we got to pick some of the girls for you. But while you're here, so we have our new intern starting today. Do you want to be known as MJ to the crowd? MJ's cool. MJ? MJ. Yeah, Boom. I like it. There she is. Hey, I didn't um, know if I was going to talk earlier. I wanted to say a few things. Might as well introduce yourself to these lovely hey world. people. What's Hello, up? world. What's Hello, happening? cruel world. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old You friend. came all the way from? Santa Carita. And that's 40 miles? It's where Magic Mountain is, Six Flags. Okay, Santa Carita yesterday? Oh, was... you're, you're uh, more north. Yeah. So my campus, my school campus was on fire. It was 105 degrees. It was raining. We had thunder and lightning in Welcome Santa Welcome to the Armageddon. Yes. It, was, it was insane. And then all of a sudden it was sunshine. And what and year are you in school? Um, I'm double majoring in kinesiology and business and marketing. You're overqualified um, for this job. <laughs> I'm still a student. Um, I did my first year of college when I was like 13 and got my first year of my associates done then. And then I... You say 13? Yeah. You like Doogie Howser? Uh, so we got the Doogie Howser of interns? <laughs> pretty cool. You like pretty Doogie cool. Howser? I don't 13? I don't, I've never even seen Doogie Howser. Do you know who he is? Mm, You're too young for Doogie Howser. A little bit. Okay, keep Crap. going. I'll tell you who he is after this. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you who he is. <laughs> um, yeah, and then so I was in school. I was in high school, so doing COC, which is College of the Canyons, the JC. And then I was just working full time. And then life happened. Um, so I had to handle some medical stuff, and now I'm back in school and ready to kill it and get on with my business, and I'm teaching yoga, walking dogs, and just kind of doing a little bit of everything, bartending at some festivals, Damn, working girl. extra cash, yeah. And all so, your family's in Santa uh, um, Clarita or Calera? I haven't spoken to a family member since I was 17. Or one, one of my mom, I saw in my car accident, but she kind of is lost. Yeah, I kind of didn't have the best upbringing. So it just drove me to be brothers and sisters. Two brothers. Um, Don't talk haven't to talked them. to them in four or five years. They're kind of like my arch um, enemies. Uh, this is like Game of Thrones. I just it was a really abusive environment I grew up in, and then my dad came out as gay after seventeen years of marriage. Yeah, super crazy. And then my mom. God, yeah. hold on. Yeah, no, I what can't even make this up. Fuck? So I was eight. I was an accident. So both my brothers are like ten years older than me, fifteen years older than me. No, 10, 12, 10 and 11 years older than me. And um, uh, my dad came out when I was about 8 or 10, 8 or 9 at the time. And my mom lost it. My brothers were already out of the house. My mom just 
lost herself. She changed my last name. My name used to be Megan Jane Franca, Frankie. And my mom changed my name to um, O'Connor, to her last name. She would spy on my dad, do crazy things. And it was a super crazy environment. And that's what I thought was normal. I thought I love you was abuse. Chaos. And chaos, yeah. So if anything, I'm glad I, I rose above it. And I love helping people. I want to create a youth charity. I'm going to create a sanctuary. I will. I'm going to create a pet resort. And that's what all this is for. I'm going to put a yoga studio on it, insulate it, do hot yoga out of it. I'm going to have to where the community can come in and kids from 12 to 18 can feel like they can have a home. They can walk the dogs if they need help with their resumes. Things I didn't have, I had to find the hard way. And that's why I was so made, just motivated just to get out of that. I was motivated to get out of that darkness. I knew it wasn't normal, but I didn't know what normal was. Sure. I just, it just didn't make sense. So I went to school Got a job under the table um, at the mall. So I was able to work full time. And then I worked at a diner. And then I was taking buses and trains everywhere because I worked at Hooters when I was 18. Kind worked of embarrassing. at Hooters. Super embarrassing. But, Not really. Yeah, Delicious the guy, wings. The guy I was dating, um, his girlfriend, or, or his cousin's girlfriend worked there. So it was kind of like a family thing. So it was like friends, you know? And Good then, environment. Yeah, I feel like it's too smart for Hooters. I was trying to get out of Santa Clarita because it was in Burbank. But, you know, just trying to get away from that toxicity. I hear you. And then I got in a really bad car accident and broke over half my body. Uh, broke, I have a broken back, broken ankle, broke half my face, um, had nerve damage over half my body. And mind you, that day I had broken up with an ex I was paying our rent for. So I woke up in the hospital with nowhere to live. I had my dog that I had to figure out a place with her and I to live. And I didn't have a car because I was taking bus and trains everywhere. So I've seen some stuff, been around, and I just want to create a, a sanctuary for the community and do good. So, Dang, girl. Um, um, that's what the goal is. It's a lot of like, stuff. Yeah, yeah, you were not ready for that. Yeah, yeah, right? was like, <laughs> as he introduced <laughs> yourself, she's like, no problem. <laughs> hey, <laughs> dee, 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 dee. What's up? Right. What's up? Man, What's What's you're Gucci? not messing around. <laughs> that's my life story. That's crazy. Crazy. So how did you find out about the fire and kid? Um, so I drive a lot because I was going to a lot of different doctors um, for my eye and for my back and whatnot. And I would just be stuck in traffic. Just stuck. And I listened to so much music. Um, I listened to everything under the sun, but it was just not enough. It wasn't stimulating, so I listened to podcasts. And I like mixed martial arts, so I fell into The Fighter and the Kid. Makes I was sense. a huge fan of Joe Rogan, and of course it kind of just all filtered into For sure. The Fighter yeah. and the Kid. Yep. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're here. Thank you. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Super excited. Man. What's up? I know it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. Just a bit. Just yeah, a, just a wee bit. bit. Yeah, we'll get into it. You're obviously going to tell, retell that story for Brian, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. So interesting. So, and we'll, trust me, we'll get more into it as we get to know you, but uh, for Chin with... Uh, Tinder, do you have any experience with Tinder? I've never been on a dating profile. Never, me neither. I've had my photos used for it Me before. too, um, and I celebrate those guys. Tight move. <laughs> if it is, I, hey, if I can help any of those guys, let me know. <laughs> the catfish guys. As long as you're not a murderer, if it helps you you know, meet a nice young lady, I'm down to, for the cause. It's Still sketchy. weird. Still really, really weird that they'd use your photos. It's just a beast, mm-hmm. though, Chin, huh? Like scanning through it. Yeah, I mean, once, once this... Whatever cold or head flu, whatever it is, goes away. I'll start swiping like crazy today and tomorrow. Makes sense because you want to talk to them like that, yeah. you know. It's but when you communicate like now, it's just stuff. all text and stuff. I have I don't even know. I I just started it, so. All right. Well, I need to get a little more educated on myself. Yeah. So is it quality or is it quantity though? Do you want to do a lot of swipes? Because isn't that overwhelming? Trying to like hold a conversation with a bunch of people. Trying to manage all these uh, hoes. So, <laughs> so far, no is, one has matched up with me, so it's not oh. that hard. <laughs> it's not that hard. Does it right really break your heart? <laughs> no. Well, because it's the thing. So if you swipe right, yeah. how long, like... I don't even... I haven't even you know what I'm saying? Like, you can tell, like, on Instagram, if you DM someone, you can tell yeah. if it says seen, right? Mm-hmm. So if you DM, like, someone, a friend or whatever, it says seen and they don't respond for a while, you're like, damn, I wonder what happened. On Tinder, can you tell if they look, saw that you're like? So Tinder, you, <laughs> they have to like you back for you to even see anything. So nothing there so far. Uh, oh, by the way. You got one? No, here's another. Fish on the line. Another, this is the kind of stuff that I see, man. Toss me that. No. <laughs> no, I swear to God, I'm like, I swear I wouldn't do that to you. I'm not that cold hearted where I'm going to swipe left on this fucking. Damn. Oh, man. LaWanna. Don't you dare swipe. Well, she, it looks like she's in Brazil. Is it? Yeah. So I'd swipe this. Which way, Chin? Left, left, left. How this far way? are these girls? 
Like, what's the distance? Is it from tracking from your phone? Like, a what's wrong with an, what's, what's what's wrong with Anita? You, no, <laughs> no. I don't want to. I mean, I would have swiped. Which way do I do this left. way? Yeah, left. Damn, I would swipe right on that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> What's and wrong with Jillian? Those, by the way, those things. What's wrong with Jillian? I, I kind of don't believe those. When they're like too hot. You think it's a cat? I think too it's too hot. Yeah. I mean, oh, you I, think I that's catfish? Can you see her? 29. So it's a bit of 49. But however. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, click that X right there. The X. That cancels her? Yeah. Why? That, that's a swipe left. Man, I'm picky, dude. Dude, you're I'm a way hater. too picky, yeah. Oh my God, I could do this all day. <laughs> what about that train wreck? <laughs> Li- Liana with tattoos on her neck. Dude. All right, no. Dude, Dude well, you, see, fuck. you see, that's the stuff that comes out. It's so weird. Dude, Blanca is smoke show spectacular. But do you see how she only shows her face and then the top of her Chin, body? are you classy? kidding me? No. You never know. You can't be presumptuous. Oh, I, I'm going to be super presumptuous on these things. Bro, Siv, do me a favor and holler at this girl. Go you know what? And- what did I hit? The, the green? Uh, all I do is swipe right if if you like her. I'm gonna hit that green. So you, just right. you know what we're gonna do this after the show. This isn't fun for anyone. You know what we need to do is have, have it pop up so people can see it. Or does that mean? No, but that's you don't want them to show their faces on YouTube. Yeah, you're is that right. illegal? Right? Like you can't probably show them. I mean, I it's, it's public. Yeah. It's Holy shnikes! This is awesome. <laughs> right, dude. Dude, pff, yeah, Oxna. <laughs> Oxna. Uh, no Kalua. No, Eva. No, Molly. Natasha, you have a, just a egg as your avatar. I can't right. have it. No, Allah. God damn it, Jessica. Okay, dude. Not mad at Lisa. No, Whitney. Enough. God damn, that's <laughs> so much fun. Dude, after this, we're going to jump on it. Yeah. Uh, probably getting some MMA stuff. Last night at the improv. Um, my boy Robbie Tebow came by Comedy Store on Tuesday night. That place so it's the the you know I do sets of laugh. I'm not knocking it. I will do sets wherever they want me for God's sake. I just, I'll, I'll take the reps. But there's like you know the Improv, amazing place. Laugh Factory, amazing in its own right. But then the Comedy Store is just it's it's weird, man. It's like just has this vibe, like this magical energy to it. Right when you step in there, and it's like. You know, for me, coming from a team atmosphere from football as a kid and then fighting where you're still part of a team, like when you get in there, you know, I walk in the green green room, it's like you're part of this team. You know, I'm still the new weird. I feel like the punter on the team. I feel like the punter. I'm the new weird punter. But it's like Rogan and Segura and, uh, you know, Bert and uh, Dalia and Brian and just everyone's there, man. It's just like it, Joey Diaz, like your whole, it's just your guys, man. So you do your set and it, everything's all positive. And then, and Sam Tripoli and it's just everyone. And then you come back in the green room. And it's just like, you're having fun. You're like, you know, it's like, it's hard to explain, man, but it's, it's like, It'd be if you've ever played any team sport. It's like the locker room that you met. You know how when you talk to athletes, or even if you played high school, when you go, "Man, what do you miss?" Like, I miss the locker room. This is that. This is that. But with the funniest people on earth. That's how great it is. That's awesome. That's the best way to explain it. Yeah, and you're from that locker room world too, so. Yeah, which is what what you miss most, and then now I found it with this, which is nuts. Yeah, crazy. But like when you go to the improv, there's no, there's like no, the, there's the bar area to hang out, but there's no, there's not like the back room where all the comics hang out. Laugh Factory, there's the upstairs same, but there's something about the comedy store, man. It's so goddamn magical. I'm there next Tuesday. Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, I think it's his last um, day of his tour. He's been on this huge Monster Energy tour. And so, um, I don't know if I'm opening up for him or I know I'm I'm obviously before him, but it's uh, Jeremiah who's probably the most talented guy you guys haven't heard of, um, who's always at the fat, uh, or always at the comedy store. He's so brilliant. He's always with Tony. He's on uh, Kill Tony uh, for sure. If you haven't seen him, check this guy out. Uh, Jeremiah Watkins, I think, is his yeah. name. And then um, Rogan's on the bill, and then myself and Tony Hinchcliffe obviously nice. is the headliner. Sponsored by Monster Energy Drinks, but it's Tony's last last day. And I tell you what's funny is when uh, and what this um, evolve us or get us to the MMA talk, which is what everyone's waiting for. Um, 
when I'm in the back there, everyone, dude, you and Diaz, what happened? You and of Diaz, course. I'm like, oh god, are you of kidding course, me? Though. Tony's super close with Diaz. Oh, okay. And he, him, and uh, Tony FaceTimed. <laughs> there? No, uh, right before. Tony's okay. like, dude, I'm chilling on my deck, and I get a FaceTime. It's Nate Diaz. I already knew what it was gonna be about. And I was like, dude, I have, like, you know, I, I love, I, I like Nate, man. I don't, you know me, I don't dislike anyone. Yeah. I just want this storm to pass. <clears throat> I want this storm to pass. But yeah. Wait, before, uh, just one more thing. So there's been subtitles. Uh, Brian's already like talked about it on his Instagram. Yeah, that's there's all fake. subtitles. Yeah. Yeah. So it's obvious the subtitles are writing something fake. They say that you said he teed off on him when you said, I think you're off on this. I said, I think you're off on this yeah, one. I think, and, I went, and he goes, I think you're off. I went, I think you're off on this one. Yeah. So just for people that saw those videos, yeah. it's such lame. It's subtitles. all fake. Yeah. Yeah. People. And I told Brian, he didn't, he didn't need to acknowledge it, but uh, you know, Brian, he has, he's, he's my brother. So he has my yeah, back. I love and Rogan was that. like, yeah, you can tell it's bullshit. And he goes, I would come out and do a video saying that. I'm like, I'm just, I just want it to go away. Like that's fake. I'm not going to give them attention or anything. It's just going to pass. It's yeah. all good. I like Nate. Some of the animations like the, that do, DOS brack. Great, yeah. How great was that Amazing. with the Gucci shoes and all that? And then <laughs> they made the animation. Like I'll, I'll kill this with humor, man. Like yeah. it's, what are we talking about? I like I like Nate. There's I have zero hard feelings against him. Um, I don't think he hates me. It's none of that. And it's also that situation. You know, Nate's watching Connor fight. I've been kind of this huge um, voice for Connor in this whole thing. So you know, he pointed his gun towards me. I get it, man. Emotions are high back there. It's over. It's done. But yeah, that video was fake news. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't. First of all, I would never uh, disrespect a fighter and say teed off. Like that's yeah, such a so stupid. douchey move. Yeah. I even a guy that I would beat, I would never say, "Man, I teed off on you." <laughs> Let alone another guy who's super talented who beat another really talented fighter. I never say he teed off. Those teed off and explaining a fight like that it isn't in my vocabulary. Yeah. It's just not. Yep. Maybe, and I don't even know what that fake news site is that reports something like that. But maybe. They um, maybe that's what they thought. I don't know, but you you got to do your you know no. if you're gonna be taken serious. I don't know. You can you can hear it. it's the audio's bad. But you can hear that you're not saying that. So they did that on purpose. I would make, yeah, yeah, but it creates it. news. You know, like yeah. that's what they're looking for. But um, not much going on in the MMA world. I mean, obviously, and we're we'll get to it with John Jones mm-hmm. stuff. You have a fight this weekend. I think we're doing a fight companion for it. Not the best timing for me, but we are doing a fight companion. <laughs> Um, and this week, the reason why the big round breakdown is coming so late for you guys, cause I did a podcast, uh, Monday for finding the kid. No, I mean, Joe Rogan and I did a, uh, Mayweather, Mayweather McGregor, McGregor breakdown. So that was kind of in replace for the big round Wednesday. We had Goldberg, you know, and then yesterday I took my son to universal 120 degrees weather. Mm-hmm. Weather it was a bad idea, and then we're doing this. You know, I get sick of hearing me talk, so I can't imagine you guys. But so that's why it's coming so late this week. Next week, back to normal time. Finally taking vacation next week, three days. Really? Yep. Nice. What days? Thursday to Sunday. Okay. Back Sunday. Don't worry, man. I'm not missing anything. <laughs> the following week, we go to San Francisco. Yeah. Love San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Love, love San Francisco. In and out, though. All right, brother. What do you got, man? All right, the first one is John Jones. This news just came in that John Jones passed his USADA blood test the night of the fight. So he failed the one the day before with just urine, but the blood test that he took right after the fight, the day of, he passed. So it doesn't make real, really doesn't make sense. And the plot thickens. Mm-hmm. My thing is with this that in that that gentleman who sent me the stuff on the on the steroid and how it, it you know it has an hour how half life or whatever it is it's only detectable for hours no the thing the truth is it, and whoever you listen to no one really knows mm-hmm. unless you're an expert in this and it sounds like even the experts are a little like what the hell's going on right now yeah it's all hearsay so the gentleman who sent me that stuff i think it's really good he knows what he's talking about um does that narrative work for this and these are all that's not my own doing that that's not my own those aren't my own words or research so i don't want to i'm not taking credit for any of that but it, you can paint whatever narrative you want here john is a terrible person john uh you know he he's reckless john is um 
obviously on steroids. John, just once again, people are trying to fuck him or, you know, that you can paint whatever near. Right now you can't because we don't know what's going to come out. So homeboy, uh, what is this, Jim? What are we looking at right here? So this is the Andy Foster, who's the head of the CSAC, California State Athletic Commission. He says himself that he doesn't, it doesn't make sense to him. Like how he's failing on the, the, the weigh-in test. But then he passed the two tests early in July, and then now he's he passed the test right after the fight. So he just writes this whole thing. But this in. is what I don't. So this is what uh, Foster said, who's like the main guy here. He says this entire situation doesn't make any sense to me. It just doesn't. If you're doing a steroid panel, then this drug is going to show up every single time. The fact that it didn't show up on July six and seven when he was tested before that's indication that he was not on that drug at the time. At that point, one of two things is probably going on here. And this is the biggest takeaway from this. This is what should be highlighted. So at that point, one of two things is probably going on here. He's either extremely careless or he's a cheater. Both those things are not good. There's, no, there's nothing positive there. I know he's already been extremely careless once in his career, but none of this makes any sense. That's why I think it's very important that we vet this and look at all the available evidence before we jump to conclusions and hang this guy out to dry. Well, he says uh, we need to look at all the available evidence before we jump to conclusions and hang this guy out to dry. Scroll up, and then he says uh, he's either extremely careless or he's a cheater. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of hang him out to dry a little bit there, right? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Jones is still entitled to due process and likely won't have the results of his B sample until later this month, which is expected to be followed by another formal hearing. Until then, all we can do is wait. Ah, I just, listen, if Foster says he's baffled and doesn't know what's going on, no one does. Mm -hmm. This guy is in the know. I think it's fair to say something's going on here. Yeah. Like something is going on with John. You don't fail three out of four USADA tests, and now was this f- four out of five? I don't know. So you fail four out of five now, and it's like fuck, man. There, but that th- thing you said earlier, it that kind of makes way more sense to me. That half life of that drug, if that's if that's real, that would make more sense to me. You want me to go over that again? <laughs> if you want to? B says it's out of your system in an hour, right? That's what he said. Oh, man. Where's homeboy's email? Hold, please. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. I got to clean up my emails, man. Do you get come downs from steroids? Or is there some steroids I'll give you like a come down after? I've never taken a steroid. Right. I wish I did. All right. Um, <laughs> here it is. And again, I don't want to give this guy's name and I'll tell you who he is. Just for obvious reasons, but let's go through this one more time. Again, this is, these are not my words. This is what was sent to me and mm-hmm. makes the most sense in the narrative of the John Jones drug story right now. The smart individual says, John Jones wasn't trying to take Tarana ball. John has been hanging around powerlifters for a few training camps. A notorious, all capitals, a notorious drug in powerlifting is called myobolarone. It's the drug that is rumored to have driven Mike Tyson to orally borrow some of Evander Holyfield's air. That's his attempt at comedy. Okay. (laughs) Why do people take it? It's very difficult to test for MIB. That's that uh, MIB. So MIBolarone. MIBolarone. Mm -hmm. Anyways, MIB on the streets. If you're looking for it, just refer to it as MIB before you get beat up. It's very difficult to test for MIB. It's a half-life is measured in hours. It's out of the body extremely fast, all capitals once again. The metabolites are even more difficult to test for afterwards. Most other drugs are detectable for months. It's a drug that is taken in milligrams. It's taken in micrograms. So that's how – so the reason why this makes sense because that's how A-Rod and a lot of the baseball players are getting away with things. They would chew those gummy beers or certain things during the game, and by the end of the game, they were free. But during the game, no one gets tested during the fight during the game. Yeah. They, so you microdose. So it's in and out, in and out. So it doesn't stick around. 
So the levels in the system are extremely small. It requires a very sensitive test. Often a dose of 200 MCGs is too much for some lifters to handle. Problem with MIB, it's impossible to find the real drug. See, this is the key here. It's impossible to find the real drug, but you can easily buy it. Uh, what is purpose? Uh, you can easily buy it uh, for like what it should be used for yeah. with underground powerlifters. But it's usually Winstrol, Dianabol, Turnabol, or Androl. Fires that take real MIB never get caught. Lifters that use real M- MIB never get caught. Guys that get a bad supplier always get caught. Mm-hmm. MIB isn't a build-up drug. One dose will increase strength immensely, and it's followed by an unbelievable increase in aggression within 20 to 30 minutes of taking it. That drug profile fits the narrative and timeline of a failed test. If you follow John's training camp logic, in quotes, why take a uh, build-up drug before the contest, end quote. It is very sensible to believe them, but for those of us who know and personally use MIB, we know he was looking to kill DC and just got a bad supply. MIB isn't a drug that John could get legally despite his resources. I don't care who you are. It is almost exclusively obtained on the black market. It's a risk all fighters and some lifters take, although most lifters do the slightly more ethical thing and compete in untested federations with other untested athletes. Food for thought. His name. (laughs) I thought you were going to say something. His name, Brian Callen. (laughs) His name, Joe Rogan. Just kidding. Uh, crazy though, right? Yeah, I mean that's just someone saying it, but I mean it does make more sense. It's it, again, it's a legit guy, but you know, it, it to the narrative it makes sense. But again, Who this knows? could be complete bullshit. Yeah, anything if could be. Foster doesn't know. We don't know. What we do know, what we do know is where there's smoke, there's fire. We know his past. We know his history. Like if, and this is gonna be a horrible reach, but bear with me here. If someone said, um pick anyone oh Lindsay lohan was out last night getting drunk again i don't bat an eye that's what we've she's done it before that's what the fuck she does uh bill cosby got caught raping another girl at 70 looking like a burnt turtle Ah, that's what he does he rapes girls like it's 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 it's, there's an mo here you know and what one thing we know we can depend on john jones is is to be the best fighter in the world fuck up and be surrounded by controversy that's what he's very reliable on we know that and he failed the day before with urine and passed the day after with blood. Like, so what the strange. Hell? Yeah. How cool would it be if John just was like, all right, here's what happened? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Have you ever had any athlete do that? No. no. Chael? Didn't, Chael after, said something. Afterwards, yeah. Who was telling me about Chael's last podcast? Is there an article on it? Can you, is there an article on what Chael said Are, on his? You're talking about what John, John Jones running away from a test or something else? Did did uh, Chael comment on that? Because uh, according to Chael and his sources, he was saying that when they remember when they're surprising people, mm-hmm. he was saying that. Um, so if they caught Jones with Turnabal, they missed the good stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Let's see what this says here. Chael Sonnen recently spoke about John Jones' third drug test failure. Okay, so this is his third. I messed up. I said four out of five. So this would be three out of his, sec, uh, his third drug test failure, his second during the U.S. USADA era. As a person who has been caught in the midst to have thoroughly used PEDs, no shit. He gave yeah. some interesting insights about his former opponent's positive tests. He makes the dis- distinction that Tyrannobol is an illegal substance and not just one that is banned for competition and that there wouldn't be much legitimate explanations on why it's found in someone's system. Quote Chael here. As uh, as far as Toronto Ball, you have to go to a museum to find that. That's not something that a person would take, someone said on the MMA Hour. On the list of performance enhancers, it's probably number eight on that list. You might be thinking, eight? That's pretty good. Well, there's only about ten substances on that list. According to Sonnen, if they caught Jones with Toronto Ball, you, you saw them must have likely missed other substances he was taking along with it. To take that, you would traditionally take that in a stack. He explains, I don't know what John did. I'm speculating off what I've done. If they catch something like that, they miss the good stuff. So, yeah, he's got to deal with this. There's no contaminated substance. This stuff is pretty hard to get. It's pretty expensive if you do get it. Much of what Sonin said in line with uh, Ian Kidd's very thorough explanation on the drug here on 
B-E, new testing was also recently, new testing, this is a key here, yep. new testing was also recently rolled out on WADA accredited labs that can detect the use of Terenable weeks or months after it was taken. Mm-hmm. From m- what my people tell me around the MMA community, that's the biggest issue is the new test yeah. they're using, and guys are like, oh, fuck. And obviously they're not, we're doing a new test, everybody. So brace yourselves. They just fucking spring on you. That's how you find out they have a new one. So according to Sony, if he believes it won't happen, Joe should probably just come clean. I found that commissions in public, the quicker you come clean, the better. That's one guy's opinion, but it's mine. Jones is never going to do that in a million years. I agree with Sona on this part. He's going to lie in his inner circle. He's going to take it to the grave. A lot of times that will come back to bite you. If he did a dishonest act, dishonest act, act sometimes the most honest thing you can do is say, yeah, you got me. All I can tell you is that I had a higher juice contract than Tropicana, and he pushed me around like a Mack truck. Versus Volvo. I think for the better part of his career, that seems to be how it works. Interesting. Yeah, man. They, everyone always says he's like a superhuman strength. Everything. So. Again, no no one really knows. I, I So what we do know is Toronto Ball is so old school. And I agree with Che on this point. If you're taking that, you know, that's like, that's like going from a fucking Civic Regular Civic, hey, man. I know, like the new <laughs> bullshit ones. Not your cool uh, yeah, rice rocket, cage. but that's like going from a regular Civic EX and then just buying a Bugatti. Mm. You, there's a middle ground there. Like Toronto Ball is so old school. It, it's so old school. That's like jumping in a, a '64 Ferrari Daytona. You're like fuck, Jesus, man. Like what? Where? How do we get to that point? There's usually, like, if you're taking that, you, you're going to be experiencing other things. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Again, I just I'm off the Jones train, man. I've, yeah, I've defended him. I've been the biggest fan. You know, I, I I realize he's dark, and I actually dig that. I think the UFC could use him, but um, yeah, this to sucks. get caught with something like this, Chael's right. There's usually you're stacking with something else, and he's right. They missed the good stuff, and how I don't know, I don't know. But when you make the type of money he does, and when you have the type of fame he does, you're gonna get. Uh, good people that come out of the woodworks, and then you get the darkness that comes out of the woodworks. And that darkness can come with some interesting stuff that get, might help your career, but eventually it's going to catch up with you. That makes sense. Yeah. It's so interesting, though. We straight up live, like MMA, I, who I was talking to, oh, I was talking about uh, Sean Shelby about this. MMA, we live in this straight up real soap opera for men. You know, it's just like this crazy soap opera. And there's always. Always something. Like I was talking to the Showtime guys, like, what, you do a podcast just on fighting once a week? I'm like, oh, yeah, you could do it twice a week if you wanted to. Really? I'm like, yeah, there's always something, man. Always, always something. Yep. Whether it's a feud, this, that, drug test, you throw in boxing, throw in some chinder, Chinder. throw in some MJ now. Mm -hmm. We do it every week. (laughs) What else you got? The Jones thing's so interesting, though. It's heartbreaking, too. Yeah, I'm bummed out about it, but. Yeah, me too. All right, so Roy McDonald was doing a Reddit Ask Me Anything, and one of the guys asked him, do you think that Robbie Lawler was on PEDs at UFC 189, their second fight, when it was like a hardcore fight where <sighs> Amazing Roy fight. almost One of won. the best welterweight yeah. fights of all time, if Indeed. not the best. So one of the fans asked, Were you, do you think that uh, Robbie Lawler was taking PEDs? And then Rory answered, I'm convinced he was. He didn't just say... Yes, or I think he says I'm convinced he was. Um, hmm. Have you ever heard Robbie Lawler stuff? Rumors? I have not. Neither. Have I, I. Nothing surprised me. I don't think he's on anything. But if, if Robbie came out and pulled a chair, son and was like, "I was doing this this whole time," I wouldn't bat an eye to it. No, to anyone. That's not knocking yeah, yeah. Robbie. Literally to anyone. It's part of professional sports. Um, that's interesting with Roy. Also, do on Reddit. I just heard from Roy. Roy's going to come to L.A. He's going he's to be on the show. Nice. Yeah. Love Roy. Nice. Love, love, love Roy McDonald. Probably the best welterweight in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably. Beat the champ. Look at the guys he's beat. Yeah. And he wouldn't fight GSP at the time because that's his boy. Super close, yeah. What else you got? Ah, right. fuck. What? Bellator sent me a uh, Fedor bobblehead doll for the studio. <laughs> 
And Fedor's in a sweatshirt, and I forgot it. Dude, <laughs> seriously? He's in a sweatshirt and gloves. It's so sick. That, oh, those are the best. And of I think they drop next special. week. God damn it. Or That's next awesome. month. Can't believe I forgot that. I kind of can't believe, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. Um, you might know more about this. Oh, but... shout out whoever sent me the wine gums. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Kevin Ioli wrote an article about Love how. Kevin. Yep, he's the best. How Oscar De La Hoya's tweet. That tweet he did about Conor McGregor and Mayweather saying, like, F you guys. Do you remember that? Yeah. The, the, I'm sure they quote it there, don't they? It's here somewhere. <clears throat> we'll keep going. But he said that tweet could hurt the Canelo GGG fight. <clears throat> What's his logic behind that? It's so easy to find it, though. I'll find it here. God, just a hater, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, here it goes. Uh, Oscar, Oscar the Grouch did a radio tour on Monday, and, of course, he was quizzed at length about... His now infamous tweet in which he apply, uh, appallingly wrote, fuck you, a day before the Floyd Mayweather come McGregor bout. Way to go, man. I mean, yeah. All right. So let me, let me see what Ke- uh, Kevin says here, though. Mm-hmm. Scroll. What, so it says the tweet, of course, made sense. Oh, made it. The tweet, of course, made it uh, made its senders look small, petty, and classless. This is a guy who has been used to being treated with kid gloves throughout his life and has gotten every benefit of doubt despite numerous Transgressions of his own, trans- transgressions. Transgressions. Um, remember the Oscar the Grouch is the same guy who said he felt Mayweather McGregor was disrespect in box after he forced fans to pay top dollar to watch Alvarez against uh, a no hoper like Liam Smith, and then went out and touted it as it would be a barn burner. Turned out to be one of the one side Alvarez beat down. Yep. Um, and then it was the same thing four months earlier when he tried to pitch a Mark Amir Khan as credible challenger Alvarez, correct? The thing that Delahoy misses is that the presence of a Mayweather McGregor fight three weeks in front of his did much to help remind the public that Alvarez Golovkin would be far more significant, far more entertaining. About I agree. A few fights in the modern era received the wall to wall media coverage Mayweather McGregor did. Mayweather McGregor are two of the biggest names in sports and they're able to provide summers worth fodder. All right. Um Anyways, the attention paid to Mayweather McGregor actually helped Alvarez Golovkin because it kept it in the news in a positive way. Yeah, but see, I I I feel like you it, know, b- boxing and MMA, MMA have this huge opportunity, right? You just had the biggest pay per view of all time, and you, mm-hmm. you've got new eyeballs, new people to the sport. And it's you know, if you're an MMA fan, you turn into boxing. Now you know the boxing characters, and if you're a boxing fan, now you know the MMA characters. So now maybe you're gonna check out the next one. You're gonna test the waters. If it's cool, you're probably gonna be a fan. If you like MMA, what it's about, there's a good chance, especially if you know the boxers, you're gonna like that, right? I love both. There's no reason to pick a team here. You don't have to. So, yeah. you know, it's like, what? Well, how are they, they going to follow it up? Well, MMA has a great follow-up. I'm sorry, they do, but let me, I was going to get to boxing first. Boxing has a great follow-up with Canelo Triple G. Best matchup in a long, 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 long fucking time. Such a good fight. Amazing fight. Ridiculous fight. But there's no reason for Oscar to keep throwing all the shade because he looks like a moron. It does make him look He just looks like stupid. It, it, dude, just do your thing, man. And remember, he wanted Canelo to fight yes, McGregor. McGregor. He was vying for that. It's just, and then Dana just freaking torched him. He put his response to Oscar going, fuck you, hashtag Mayweather uh, versus McGregor. Both of you are disrespecting the sport of boxing. At least they didn't dress up like women, post that, and do coke nonstop. So Dana puts... Uh, what the fuck? Is this guy snorting coke and drinking booze again? Hashtag Oscar De La Aram. I mean, I it's, there's just no need for the shader to pick a side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, Oscar, you're actually helping this. You know? You're like, you doing this fuels the fire. That may also help it be the biggest pay of all time. Sure. But, again, you, you need those eyeballs, the MMA fans that – and I told I told Showtime, I told everyone, the reason why this will be the biggest of all time because it crossed over to pop culture because the MMA following. That though, the MMA following and being current and being fresh and having these stars and that crossed over to pop culture and that elevated this thing to the biggest of all time. Those same people are looking for something to do September, was it, 16th? Yeah. Yeah, they're looking for something to do September 16th. They might as well tune into the two best boxers in the world, not named Floyd... Mayweather, but he's retired. So the two best in the world are fighting each other. It's an amazing fight. I think you're going to get a trilogy out of that fight. I really do. It's an amazing fight. But you're fucking it up, man. 
So boxing is a great follow-up. They have that. Canelo, Triple G, best matchup by far in years, years, years in boxing. So then what's MMA do? Shit, man, we got that Mass Square Garden card. You seen that thing? No. I mean, I've seen it before, right? Stacked. That's our follow-up. Now, it's not to November, but that's a pretty good follow-up. Now, if you're a boxing fan, you turn in the fucking Saturday's card, you're going to be brokenhearted. That thing's a you know snooze fest. But um, if you go to Wikipedia, they might have it on here. You know how the seven, Wikipedia like has some of the stuff? Yeah. Mm, yeah, go to Wikipedia for me for the rumored ones. So let's just go. Th- this is our. So they have their triple. That's uh, way too many fights on there. Oh, that's 2017. Um, did you? Would you go to UFC? Oh, you, you said UFC 2017. UFC 27. There you go. Uh, no, you clicked on Mass Square Garden. <laughs> Click on the the far 217. The far 217. Right there. Yeah. Then scroll down. There we go. All right. So, and I, I don't know if all this is confirmed, but this is the rumored card. So, again, boxing has the Triple G Canelo. Great fight. In November, we have this. Your main event, Michael Bisming, George St. Pierre. Not a you know blockbuster. Still George St. Pierre, Michael Bisming for a middleweight title. Fantastic fight. I will take that. That doesn't break pay-per-views on its own, but with this card, it's going to do great. Then you have Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw. What? That's, I mean, that's a ridiculous fight. Yes. That's such a tough fight to call. Then you got rumored Wonderboy Thompson, Jorge Masvidal. Phenomenal fight. Jose Aldo, Ricardo Lamas. It's a good fights, man. You got my boy Pat Cummins fighting Corey Anderson. But still, the thing's stacked. Mm-hmm. Stacked, stacked. It's good follow up, like they're because they're good matchups. That's why I like it. Like Wonder Boy T- Thompson versus Jorge Masvidal. Tell me how that fight's gonna go down. Know, Fucking right. tough to call. Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw. Jesus Christ, you want to talk about a matchup? We gotta get Cody in here. I just spoke to him the other day via DM, but we gotta get him in here. And then uh, Bisbee GSB. Like th- those top three fights are ridiculous. That's our follow up. Which I think once it gets closer too, since we haven't seen GSP in so long, once it gets closer, I think I'll be more excited. Because GSP was the biggest thing ever. Four years ago, though. Yeah. The, the landscape has changed, though. The, I know. You have new fans, younger fans. They're not that familiar with them. I know, but He's once an older he comes guy. back. He's a boring fighter, you know? <laughs> I love GSP. Former Tramper. I love George. He's one of my favorite people on earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. the, the, the energy's not there. And then people go, oh, that's just the way you feel about it. This has come from me, trial and error. And you've been there at the live crowds. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll talk about it you know, uh, g- during fan questions. So I want to bring it up. Well, what do you think of GSP Bisping? And every single show I go, what do you guys think about GSP Bisping? And it's lukewarm. I, I do predict This is though. talking about a guy uh, on, in the field. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. this is no, they have direct been that way. Yeah. access with the fans. They go, nah. <laughs> that literally, the no one's like, yeah. I know. I was there. You know how it is. And I go, damn, that's it? It's a GSP one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. I think when when it gets closer, I just think it's going to come back. That's fair. Yeah, I hope. You know, I'm excited to watch it. I think it's a great matchup. But again, (laughs) doesn't doesn't blow my hair back. Yeah. Did they find an opponent for Francis? No, he's off. He's off that one card. I saw they they were airing it, though, on... uh, uh, so I was watching college football last night. Thank God football's back. Dear sweet baby Jesus, football's back. Uh, Alabama, Florida State, Saturday. If you don't watch that fight, punch yourself in the dick. Um, I'm sorry if you don't that watch fight. that. If, it's a fight. It's going to be a fight. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. All right. What else you got? Nate Diaz, his coach. He says that Nate Diaz will need at least $20 million for his next fight. That's fair. Is it fair? Yeah, it's I think fair. he said twenty or thirty million somewhere. Yeah, around that's there. fair. Well, but in, in this, the hold him, and they're, they're right, and I agree. Nate should get paid that much, if not more. Mm-hmm. But um, 
So his coach goes on to say at least 20 to 30 million pressed old submission radio. Come on, UFC's making a whole lot of money, a whole lot of money, and they're pocketing it. They're giving more to McGregor, so it's not fair. Well, that's see, this is where they fuck up. So they're giving more to McGregor, so it's not fair because it takes two in that ring to draw a crowd. I mean, it's two good fighters. It's just like uh, Mayweather when he fought Berto. It wasn't even sold out at all. Uh, it was embarrassing because the, the guy couldn't draw a crowd. See, that's what I'm saying. It's the fighters that draw the crowd, Nathan and McGregor. Th- third one would be out saying everyone knows, so he needs to get paid $30 million. I agree he needs to get paid $20, $30 million. The, the holdup here is how much they can pay McGregor What his because McGregor's stock is the highest in the world. After Floyd Mayweather having a good outing there, making, you know, especially if the pay per view number is 6.5, and I heard it's even more than that. So he gets a percentage of pay per view. Floyd's getting percentage. So let's say he makes $140 million off that last fight. You think he's going to come back to the UFC and fight for anything less than $40 million? And that's being conservative. Yeah. You're crazy. Yeah. You're, you're out of your mind. How, in what world? In, if you're a negotiation table, is the is WME going to be like, we need you to fight Nate for 10? And Nate, we know the two fights you fought him in, which were these wars, you and you got paid a total of $2.5 million. We need you to fight him for $2 million. Good luck getting that together. If you go to Connor and say, hey, we're going to give you 10 mil, Nate, we're going to give you two. There's no way. That's You're not even the same ballpark, man. So that's going to be the holdup of this fight. You got, you got Conor McGregor with the most negotiating power of all time in the history of mixed martial arts. Not even fucking close. Mm-hmm. Not even close. If this does happen, this trilogy, it, um, well, it will happen. I guarantee so you that's the next fight. Would that? Do you think that's going to affect all the all the fighters payment wise after this? You have to get to a certain level because, and Nate's Nate's been smart about this. Nate has been waiting for Conor for this opportunity because yeah. the payday's so big. That's exactly what he should do. Nate would not sell two million pay per views, a million and a half pay per views, if he fought Tony Ferguson, Khabib, Kevin Lee. That's that's not. It's just that's not what the market is. Oh, you're a hater on Nate. I'm not a hater on Nate. I like Nate, but Dana White's been on record saying this. You look at the the history, the numbers. He's not in the same ballpark as a Conor McGregor as far as superstardom. He's just not. In the MMA community, we love them, but as far as cross crossing over and getting those other, um, you know, attention from all these other media outlets, he's not at that level. He's been very smart and calculated by not fighting until he gets to Conor McGregor. Now, the with the trilogy, which I think is going to be the biggest UFC event of all time, will it break six point five million? No, 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 come on, don't be fucking crazy. It's going to break whatever the UFC record is, which I think is held by Conor. Do you know what it is? You got a fancy computer there. I'm sure it could tell us. <laughs> You're strict, so I forgive you, but I'm going to have MJ take a hand in your face. <laughs> Five of the century. What the No, hell? that uh, UFC pay-per-view record. God damn it. It's just giving us the goddamn. Do you think the weight's going to make an advantage for either fighter? I think, having to drop weight, I think I think you, it's gonna you're gonna get the best of Conor McGregor and the best of Nate Diaz. We're gonna find out who's actually the better fighter. Hmm. At seventy, it's a the, that was a shit show for both of them. Mm-hmm. Flo, uh, Nate had a much he had a more of an advantage in that fight. Yeah, one point six. So let so let's just go through the biggest pay per views of all time. UFC two hundred two Diaz McGregor two one point six mil. UFC one ninety six McGregor Diaz one one point three. UFC 205, Eddie Alvarez, uh, Conor McGregor, 1.3. UFC 100, 1.3. I think the greatest uh, lineup of all time. Aldo versus McGregor, 1.2. Lesnar Carwin, I was on that, 1.1. I like to think I had. They, they did <laughs> one point. So they did 1,160,000. I like to think I contribute at least 50 to those. Probably. 50 pay-per-view buys. All oh, at 50. your boy. <laughs> All at your boy. Smash Chris Tusher's shirt. 30 <laughs> seconds. All at your boy. Um, you know, and then you got Rousey coming in. Liddell. Yeah. You know, not even close. Look at those. Yeah. So, you, mm, 
So, you know, when people say, God, uh, GSP was a, such a big star, such a big star. He's, he was so big. He's the biggest of all time. His biggest pay-per-view he ever did was against Nick Diaz and Demon Break a Million. So was he that big of a star? Mm-hmm. You could say that in you know when he fought Nick, it was in 2013, so it's a different animal. Still. Still. Lesnar Carwin was in fucking, what was that, 2010. God damn. Wow. I, that was seven years ago? I fought in the UFC seven years ago? Holy balls. So 2010, so not that long ago. Wow. It's interesting though, right? Yeah, cool look at this. That's re- very cool. Just show that again, this this shows you how big of an animal Conor McGregor is mm-hmm. and how much power he has in the grand scheme of things. Now N- Nate's gonna be somewhere in there. I guarantee you Nate could so Nate's just the biggest star of Saint George St. Pierre. I'm gonna take heat for that. That's ridiculous. Number wise, I bet you Nate could pull in nine hundred and fifty thousand pay per view buys. The trilogy would be big. Imagine all the Stockton clap shirts that people are wearing. The the trilogy fight, <laughs> biggest fight of all time. Yeah, for sure. Such a good fight. Such it's it's the the best UFC fight of all time. Mm-hmm. It's an amazing fight, but the guys have to get paid like it's the best fight of all time, <laughs> like it's the biggest pay per view of all time. So again, if you're Nate Diaz team, if you're Conor McGregor's team, we all know this. I'm not fucking. Nostradamus here. We all know this. Their team knows this. So they're going to the UFC going, yep, you want to make this happen? Biggest card, uh, end of December, that uh, New Year's card. This is what we need. And then you got to figure, so you got to deal with these animals. This is what McGregor needs. This is what Diaz needs. Both those guys need to win that fight. What do you mean? They both need to win so bad. Con- Connor, I, there's more pressure on Connor. Way more pressure. Yeah. Because he's going from, you know, he has his, his, a good showing against Floyd Mayweather. We know him as this UFC beast, right? It's like, ah, but if in the UFC, you'd smoke him in 30 seconds. You did that. You have all this fame. You have all these new eyeballs on you now. You get paid more money than God once you do sign this deal. Now you got to perform, which he will. I guarantee he does. But it's just there's, there's more pressure on Conor on this fight. So you're saying no less than 40. You think he'll take it for 40 mil? Yes. All right, how about we move on to this? Um, Andre Pedaneris says that Jose Aldo wants to fight out his UFC contract so he can go to professional boxing. Damn. What happened to soccer? Remember he's all into soccer and shit? He's Remember he tired and was going to play soccer and the UFC was like, uh, okay. <laughs> Didn't care. He's like, uh, I'm just playing, man. Uh, I'll fight. Yeah. Uh, let's see. He says he's training boxing because he uh, has had this dream of competing in professional boxing. Yep, 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 yep. If he was if it was up to him, he'd fight all his UFC fights left on the contract in three months and go box. He wants to box professionally. Yeah, bro, he said that. He doesn't want to stay inactive for a long time, and there's both sides. He definitely wants to finish the contract. Well, that's not the way the UFC works. You're not going to fight out your contract in three months. This ain't fucking 1993. You're not going to fight in a tournament one night and fight three guys. We're waiting for the UFC. Um, it's still unclear... When Aldo will return to lockdown, but a rematch with Cub Swanson around November, December is most likely the scenario. Although they said Ricardo Lamas, but we're trying to get this fight done against Cub or someone else. He wants to fight against someone well ranked and wait for an opportunity to fight for the belt. Yeah, so what's up with the Lamas thing then? Rumors, Wikipedia news, fake news maybe. Sometimes the bitches are right though. What else you got? How about this? Um, what do you think about what Connor says about Floyd Mayweather being what do you, what do you a potentially great UFC fighter? So he goes, I always told him he was not a fighter, but a boxer. But sharing the ring with him, he is certainly a solid fighter. Strong in the clinch, great understanding of frames and head position. He has some very strong tools he could bring into the MMA game for sure. Uh, I mean, I don't think, you know, the, you'd never see Floyd Mayweather in the, in the octagon. Do you think he would do even all right? No. Considering what no. Connor's saying? No, 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 no. I mean, yeah, if he started, you know, uh, 
if he started, if he gave him enough time, he would adapt. Being the, the as smart as he is as a fighter and with his boxing skills, and he worked on his takedown defense, he'd be a, a, a amazing mixed martial artist. But no, I mean, let's say they want to do this fight next year, he's screwed. Mm-hmm. He, he'd he'd probably do a little better than CM Punk. A little. What else you got? Andre Berto. Um, he was asking Dana White to call him because he wants to be the first professional championship boxer that gets a championship in boxing and in the UFC. I love Andre Berto. If anyone could do it, it's him. I don't, you know, he his dad fought in the UFC. His brother, his sister, uh, his brother, yeah, yeah, MMA yeah. fighter. His sister competed in jiu-jitsu, so he's been around it. I'm sure he grew up wrestling and doing some, have at least having a, uh, some knowledge of it. So um, I'd love that, man. Depending on how serious he is about it. So you, well, since he did grow on, grew up around MMA, he'd probably have a. It'd be a handful. He's super athletic, super explosive. What else you got? All right, Tarn Woodley says he would be willing to move up to fight to fight GSP at one eighty five. He said he would wa- fight the winner of GSP Bisbing, but he would rather have GSP. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Okay, cool, man. In other news: He wants to be the next Batman. You know what I'm saying? Like, no shit, bro. Um, what are they doing at 70? I guess the winner of uh, Jorge Wonderboy Tom. That was if you suck. guys book. That was suck. if you guys book Wonderboy Woodley <laughs> three. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. They're bad dance partners. Amazing against anyone else. You book those two, they're the worst fights of all time. Hmm. Don't ever do that again. Yeah, I don't want to see that ever. All right, Misha Tate, she's moving into managing now. So says, Misha Tate moves into boardroom as manager. And there's like a few female managers, right? I think there's like a couple. Uh, Masvidal uh, has a female manager. That's the only one I know. Okay. Hold on. Grow up? <laughs> grow up? Uh, I said grow up. Uh. There was no fear on the front... Uh, Oh, that's what she was talking about her last fight. Oh, word. Yeah. But her, so, her team now is AO, AO8 management. AO8 management to represent fires. To date, they've signed pros Gina and Sydney, Dan Doys, a bunch of other random people I don't know. Plans for MMA, okay. The reason I wanted to make it my mission is to remember how difficult it was for me in my early days. I learned a lot during that time. I went through the thick of it. I've had bad management and great management. Some set the example to fall in their footsteps. Others showed me not what not to do. I had awful experience being taken advantage of and want to make their lives as easy as possible, focus on cre- training. My partners who share vision for an athletes. Yeah, I wish her the best, man. I mean, she's a smart girl, too. Um, most of all, Tate saw an opportunity, and when she met Reynolds, who's a uh, firm man, just popular rock bands, The Killers, Imagine Dragons, they saw us. You know, I... Do they make a lot of money? Can they make? I mean, I know probably managers for those big bands and for it, like if you're the manager of big celebrities and like really big fighters, you make good money. Yeah, for, like Connor's sure. manager makes good money. Connor's manager, I mean, managers make good money. They, you know, depend. They make good money, you, but you have to have good clients. Um, you know, I, I'm sure. Which uh, and Misha is very aware of this. You know, Misha was an outlier, amazing fighter, very good looking, very good skills, well spoken. She's a Huge outlier. Name another f- female fighter. Let's be honest here. Dime piece. World world class skills and speaks well. Name go. Just give me like two. Just Gina. <laughs> uh, Gina Cron was in the best interview. I mean, she was very still really cute. She was sweet. No, yeah. don't. First of all, first of all, if we're <laughs> if we're if this is Tinder, they're both going to swipe, which is oh to the right. To the right. Fuck yes yeah, to the right. 100%. Double right. And then I'm trying to make sure <laughs> I do it on my friend's phone. But <laughs> Gina's number one as far as looks. Yeah. Misha's probably two. Yeah. If not one B. Like she's right there. But yeah, Gina's number one. But as far as like uh, articulate and well spoken and like knowing the game, being student, and then also being really good at, you know, evolving. Because Gina was so long ago, she just was good at, you know, striking. But, you know, Misha was good at everything. Mm hmm. But uh, so she was an outlier. But again, as a manager, especially you know, you look at her stable. And obviously, they're going to grow. You're not making money. You're really not. Unless you find another outlier, which is going to be tough. 
you better hope they walk into your office or you have a connection to them. Otherwise, you're just you're wrangling cats. <laughs> wrangling cats. You're wrangling cats. You're not getting paid much money for it. So it depends. What, now, I'm sure she's not going into this going, God, I hope this pays my uh, fucking electric, electricity bill next month. No, she's smart on that. It's probably another project for her to do. She has really good knowledge. She's going to help the fighters. I'm all about it. I hope it goes really well for her. She's the perfect person to do this, by the way. But you're not making money. What else you got? That sucks. All right, so Manny Pacquiao, he's not going to rematch Jeff Horn again. And I it's mean, because he's going to be doing some political stuff. And then it's going to be in the time that he would need to train for him. So they're supposed to fight in November, rematch? Yeah, the rematch. And that's not happening anymore. Tell you what, let my boy fucking Crawford go up there and smoke the shit out of Horn and then fight Pacquiao next. How about that? Let Terrence Crawford go up there and just destroy him. Oh, well, there you go. Relay it. Terrence Crawford plans to move up to 147 once Horn Pacquiao winner. Well, now she's giving Horn to fight for the title. Get the title. Once Pacquiao quits playing grab ass in the government, <laughs> come back and fight Crawford. Let me know how it works out for you. Also, Crawford needs that big win to get in the, the mainstream media. Pacquiao would do that for him. Mm. And he would wreck Pacquiao. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah. Terrence Crawford's so goddamn talented. Oh my word! If you guys don't know, look him up. Terrence Crawford. He's a freaking. He's 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 also from Nebraska. He, he's a, he's a freak, man. He's just again. He's he, when I talk about the com- complete package, you know. He, I mean, he's not fucking Brad Pitt or uh, Israel Elba or whatever the fuck his name is, but <laughs> it just he's Elba. more of a Morgan Freeman. But he, so he doesn't look great. As far as, like, he's not a dime piece. He's not bad looking. He's not Shrek. But, you know, his personality, he doesn't have the loudest personality. He has the skills, though, like a motherfucker. I'd have, you know, if you look at his body of work, you you probably put him over uh, Lomachenko. But as far as just pure dominance, Lomachenko's, you know, people have Lomachenko and just what he does. Um, Most people have Lomachenko one. Andre Ward, number two, and then Terrence Crawford, number three. That's kind of unanimous across the board. Um, you know, but I, you could, for me, if you put those three any, you, anywhere in the top three, I'm, I, I see arguments for all three of them. But, yeah, look at, if you don't know who Terrence Crawford is, look him up. He's ridiculous. God, hopefully Horn's like, uh, I guess I'll fight Crawford. He wouldn't, though, would he? I, th- I think Horn's like a fucking school teacher on the side. Yeah, I think so, he is. God, yeah, ain't no school teacher beating Terrence Crawford up. Uh, trying to think, if I'm Horn, I'd probably wait it out for Pacquiao quit playing grab ass in the government. I get that rematch, make good money there, and then get a second payday and fight Terrence Crawford and get smoked. Hmm. But I think he beats Pacquiao in the rematch. Boy. So for Horn, the potential is Horn's not beating Crawford. He's not that ain't happening in any situation. So that'd be a one time payday. So he doesn't really get to defend his belt. He's gonna have a much better chance of beating Pacquiao again because he's already fought him. They've done that dance. He knows what works. Fight him, make money, then you get your ass beat by Crawford. That's the plan. Mm. Then you go right off in the sunset and teach English in Australia. <laughs> what else you got? English in Australia. Um Well, as you know, the streams for the McGregor Mayweather fight, they were all all over the place. They weren't working for a lot of people. So the UFC says they're going to refund anyone who had trouble with getting their stream up. I <laughs> hope so. What else would you do? I know. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it took them a while to send that response, right? Yeah. Uh, this is their statement? Yeah. Not that big of a... See, this is a, not too many bad streams because it wasn't that big of a hit. Only 700, 705 retweets. Uh, we always try to put on the biggest and most exciting fights. We want our fans to have the best experience when watching our events. Unfortunately, we didn't deliver the way we wanted on Saturday because of New Leon's New Leon's technical issues on USC.tv. As usual, we always take care of our fans, and we will fix this. We have started processing refunds immediately or anyone that cannot access the fight after purchase. That's cool. Um, I think everyone is worried. Like, this fight was such a big deal. I remember even talking to Espinoza. He said for the Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather fight, they had some issues because there's such a demand the 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 technology the machines aren't there like they're trying you know so they were afraid of this so hopefully it yeah. didn't affect them too much. There was some fake news I saw one hundred million illegal streams. Yeah, that was I the think first that was one. the total. 
Uh, so they said the that was news. that was through one analytics agency. They they found it was one hundred million, but it wasn't accurate then. That's so many. Because then I think the one the most accurate one was like three million. I uh, see. I heard ten million. Yeah, so it's, it's all over the three place, million eight so. shit. Ten million yeah. would make more sense. I bet somewhere in the middle. When I say middle, nowhere near a hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounded so crazy. Yeah, I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ. I think that's it, man. Unless you want to talk about. Nah, that ain't happening. Is that it, brother? That's it. Do you want to talk? <laughs> you already talked about Struve and Volkov, right? Uh, I mean, we've talked a little bit on uh, with Rogan and I did. That's the only fight I've talked about on this card. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it's, and it's only on Fight Pass? Yeah. So you got Struve, Volkov. Uh, Volkov, you guys would know him. He's the Bellator champ. He's a freak, man. He's yeah. a he's a tough customer. Tough fight for Struve. Really tough fight for Struve. He was the Bellator champion. I don't know if they ever gave him the belt. Yeah, he they did. He's the Bellator season ten champion, and then he was also the M one Global, which is that Russia league. You got to be a tough customer to fight in that thing. But uh, he was the Russian champion there. So the only thing that bothers me is when he fought super elite competition. Yeah, I mean he beat Roy Nelson. He was split decision in Timothy Johnson. It's gonna be a fun fight. It's not, you know, the the heavyweight division is what it is. But this this card is uh mm-hmm. kind of it. What can you do about it? For God's yeah. sakes. I think we're gonna do a fight campaign for it. Pretty you think? sure. But I'm pretty sure. Yeah. If he announced it, we're doing it. Is that it, brother? That's it, man. Nice, man. Nice. Mm-hmm. Can always something going on. Johnson wants to fight Jose Aldo featherweight. I don't see why they wouldn't do that. That's a fun matchup. Oh, this one, uh, you. S- so it's not a hundred percent sure that the pay per view buys were at six point five million, but Uriah Faber had a little video, and then the very end of it, you see Dana White saying million buys, and then Uriah Faber repeats it goes six point five million buys. But you said you probably heard that they did somewhere around there. From what I hear, yeah, it's it's in that ballpark. Wow. From what I hear, it's for sure the biggest pay for all time. Mm-hmm. And then depending on the the refunds and the you know the the streaming stuff, they're gonna figure out. But yeah, that, it's supposed to be around there. Cool. I heard higher. I heard it's more around seven when Jeez. all said and done, which should be crazy. How funny would it be if it comes out? It's like one point two. Just know. a bummer. Super bummer. Is that uh, so? Is that where this all got started? Yeah, you right doing that. Was That's he doing it with Snoop Dogg or something? Yeah, this is the thing here. This is the video. Yeah, please play that for me. Let's see. What? I spent oh six thousand dollars at my house watching the fight because <laughs> <laughs> I had them off these and I wanted that motherfucker on six point five million pay per view buys. So you hear Dana White just saying million pay per view buys. They caught him at saying million. <laughs> I spent oh six thousand and then my house watching your eye repeats it though. Yeah. Because I had them off these and I wanted that one. Dana wouldn't just make up that number to these yeah, guys. True, true. And like I said, for before I even saw this, I didn't see any of this. On my side of things I heard it was around that. And then they think it's gonna be higher more around seven once all said and done. But then with the refund rebates and all that it should be interesting. But yeah, nothing wrong with that. I mean, hey, you're right, for sure don't do that though. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. For sure don't do that. Is that it, brother? That's it, man. Boom, man. Fun one. Fun one. Appreciate you guys. Lots going on. Enjoy the fight. When I say this fight, um, it's on Fight Pass. It's football season, though. So you got... Ah, oh, fuck. Is the... God, I tell you what. I'm doing the campaign of Stern, freaking Alabama, Florida State. And then what, what time, time do that? my Buffaloes play? I think it's at 5 p.m. Pacific. But that's the that's the game, man. Are you a football fan, Jim? Hell no. MJ? No, I could have. Fi- Five p.m. Five p.m. Hell no, huh? No, well, the you lived in Texas for God's sakes. Yeah, but I was a kid. Yeah, but still. Yeah, I don't know. I just never got into sports. <laughs> just fighting. Just MMA, yeah, fighting. You're I like, don't know why. You like Rogan? Well. Yeah, you're like Rogan. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch any other sports. Only like really big deals like the Olympics when it's something huge or the, or the Super Bowl. Once every yeah. four years? Yeah, stuff like that. Oh, wow. And then, yeah, the, like the World Cup.
Cup. Mm-hmm. I'll watch that. All right, well, save us talk for another time. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to Brian about sports. <laughs> God damn it. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Um, I will be in San Francisco September 14th at the Cobbs Common Club. That club, that bitch is almost sold out. Uh, TFATK.com for tickets. And then September 22nd, Long Beach, California. I'm at the Laugh Factory in Long Beach. That is in Long Beach, Snoop Doggville. Long Beach, California, Laugh Factory, September 22nd. Both are almost sold out. And then this Tuesday, I am uh, with my friend Tony Hinchcliffe. It is his last stop on his comedy tour. Joe Rogan, Jeremiah Watts, Watkins? Watkins. Jeremiah Watkins, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, and myself be at the Magical Comedy Store this Tuesday night. Get tickets uh, you can, on Instagrams at the Comedy Store, for God's sakes. Everything for me, tfatk.com, San Francisco, Long Beach. Get them now. As usual, thanks for listening, guys. Bigger, browner, batter. I'm out.